One of the Korean movies here getting much hype is the 2016 movie Age of Shadows. Boasting an array of star power, an incredible setting, and slick action scenes, this has blockbuster written all over it. But does this action thriller actually live up to the hype? Let's find out. Taking place in Japan occupied Korea in the 1920s, this movie starts off with a bang, quite literally. A Korean freedom fighter is running away from Japanese police as the Japanese police are in hot pursuit of him. As he's trying to escape, the Korean freedom fighter gets shot in the toe and he starts to bleed profusely. So he crawls inside a building to await his last stand. Not too far from the action, the Japanese police officer, who happens to be Korean Lee jong Chol, arrives on the scene. He sneaks through the back door of the building where the freedom fighter is held and wants to talk to him. Bleeding from all over and slumped, the Korean freedom fighter turns to the Korean turn Japanese police captain and says, You betray your own country to shun Korean independence. To which Japanese Captain Jong Chol says, Korean independence is a lost cause. Shortly after, the Korean freedom fighter soon commits suicide. This was just the beginning of the fight for Korean independence, and thus starts the beginning of Age of Shadows. From the very opening scenes of the movie, it's apparent that Age of Shadows is one of the major blockbusters of Korea this year in 2016. As stated earlier, everything from the costumes, the environments, and especially the high-paid actors are all in this movie. Speaking of the actors, this movie is headlined by Gong Yoo, and if you watched Train to Pusan earlier this year in 2016, you know the Train to Pusan star is ready to rock in this movie as well. As expected, Gong Yoo brings instant charm and charismatic stage presence to the lead Korean freedom fighter, Kim Woo Jin. Song Kang Ho of Snowpiercer fame also joins this movie as the Korean turned Japanese actor Lee Jong Chol and he plays this role so well. In fact, Song Kang Ho is probably the superstar of this movie. Song Kang Ho just did an incredible job as the Korean turned Japanese police officer and he's just really the centerpiece of this movie. Um Tae Goo plays the role of the Japanese officer Hashimoto and plays it down pat. Veteran actress Han Ji Min also fits her role as the lovely female resistance fighter. And lastly, Japanese actor Shingo Tsurumi plays the strict and ruthless Chief Hagashi down to a T. Directed by Kim ji -yoon, this movie is quite long. In fact, this movie clocks in at about 2 hours and 20 minutes. We had that Lord of the Rings, Titanic length to it. This movie will really test your bladder. You'll be like, oh man, gotta go to the bathroom. But no, I can't miss this movie because it has so many cool action scenes. And um, if you're like me, you don't want to miss the scenes. So you hold it in. So I hope you guys have strong bladders because this movie will definitely test it. Yeah, it will. This movie is also being compared to last year's big blockbuster, Assassination, very favorably. What I really liked about Assassination and Age of Shadows is that yes, they both dealt with Korean independence, but they took vastly different spins to it. And one of the last things to note is that it was co-produced by the Warner Brothers. And you might be asking, where are the Warner Brothers doing Korean cinema? What I found out when I watched this film at the Busan International Film Festival was that the staff was saying that the Warner Brothers took an interest in Korean movies and wanted to finance it. They wanted to get their hands in Korean cinema and see what all the fuss was about. And with the WB financing and distributing this movie, I can see more Hollywood companies getting into Korean cinema in the near future. Now let's talk about the movie's good parts as well as its bad parts. Now first the good. If you like action thrillers or spy movies, you cannot go wrong with Age of Shadows. It is one of my favorite Korean movies of 2016. I mean the opening scene of the movie itself, as well as the train scene. And yes, if you talk to people that have seen this movie, they will definitely mention the train scene. These two scenes alone is what should make you watch this film. The cat and mouse games of who's gonna betray who or who's on which side is a must watch and it'll keep you on the edge of your seat. The acting's all around solid and the camera angles. Oh my gosh, the camera angles are very underrated. It's what makes the action scenes work in this movie. I've always said, you can tell if an action spy movie is good or not just based off the camera angles. It really affects the flow of the action thriller scenes. The movie also captures the environment of the 1920s, as well as the Korean struggle for independence. And the last big thing that I really appreciated about this movie is it didn't really have much fat or filler content in it, especially for a two hour and 20 minute movie where adding that extra filler is so easy to do. Director Kim Joon did not stoop to that level. Now with the bad parts of this movie, honestly, there's not really much. You know me guys, I only talk about the major flaws of a movie. Anything that's minor, I'm not really gonna nitpick. Because if you were gonna do that, pretty much every movie has a flaw. So with the major flaws of this movie, some of the freedom fighters weren't given as much depth as I would like to. And I know with the large cast in this movie, you can't give everyone love, but I would like to see a little bit more depth. Maybe two minutes on this person here and three minutes of this person here, nothing too big. Another problem I have with this movie is that the ending can be considered a bit too cliche or formulaic. And Kim Joon is one of the most known directors here in Korea, so you would be expecting something more like a twist at the end or something more original, but yeah, the ending was pretty predictable 
involved and pretty cliche. I don't really mind it too much because the story and the movie as a whole was really strong. The movie answered a lot of my questions. So at the end, yeah, even having a cliched ending didn't ruin the experience for me. The movie wrapped up so many points nicely that I didn't mind the movie's ending was a bit formulaic. But other than those two problems, I really don't have anything bad to say about this movie as I really enjoyed watching this movie. Now over to you. What do you guys think about this movie review? Does our movie review make you want to watch this movie even more? And if you guys have already seen this movie, what's your take on this movie? Do you guys agree or disagree with our film review? We'd love to hear your take in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed this movie review. If you guys want to learn more about in the Asian movie reviews, please subscribe to our YouTube. And if you guys want more Asian movie suggestions, please download our free ebook, The 108 Asian Movies to Watch. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.